This is where the countdown gets serious. Episodes 5 through 1 define the InfoGov hot seat in 2025. Real leaders, real practitioners, real conversations about AI, data, and governance. No hype, no theory, just what works. From technology companies to law firms to enterprise teams shaping the future. Let's get into it. Episode number five starts now. So, because I'm really intrigued about the name Store X. So, can you explain in simple terms how Store X's uh, decentralized storage network works and how it ensures data privacy? So, so basically, Store X is a decentralized cloud storage platform. It, it's a platform which uses the technology of blockchain, a decentralized ledger technology, basically to ensure that the data is really pretty private and you have complete control over your data. So how we ensure is we, we have a unique uh, architecture which is set up for this. So what happens is whenever a user is using storage to upload his data, first in the user's device itself, the data gets locked with user's own private key. And then it's uploaded on the network where it's broken down into small pieces. It's like fragmented into small pieces. Then we replicate those pieces and then we distribute it to around 2,500 nodes which are spread worldwide. So what happens is because of this unique feature, nobody can ever access your data unless you unless it's authorized by you. Means you, because you are locking the file with your own private, nobody ever can ever participate or look into your data. Even we as a service provider would never have access to your data. So you have the complete control over the data. And what happens is even if some data segment is lost or one of the node is not responding due to any technical reason, since we are replicating the data and keeping it at multiple locations, users will always have an access to the data. So you need users' private key to access the data, and this is only with the user. It doesn't get shared with the network or any other third party. So that ensures that your data is really very private, very secured, plus redundant. That's 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 one of the very unique uh, way in which we ensure that the user's data is really private and not accessible to anyone. Yeah, that's unique indeed, and thanks for explaining that in simple technical but non-technical technical terms. So many opportunities for AI. I know you touched on a few of them, especially with agentic AI. But what do you see as the biggest challenges for AI and information governance in the tech industry? I won't even say the next five yeah. years. Let's just talk about the next couple of years. Yeah, totally. So Everyone uh, thinks a lot about ethics and bias. And of course, it's super important because we need to, to basically moderate what's going into a automated algorithms to be able to understand if they're biased, if they skew to some, to some extent. And there are tools which already allow us to do that on the data side, basically understand if the data sets are balanced. Additional concern is um, IP protection. So nothing is leaking out to, you know, models, foundational models, all kind of providers and so on and so forth. So for that, uh, definitely lots of things could be done. So for example, monitoring what's, uh, what data is switched and, and using access controls to basically limit that. Uh, but I think what's, what's most overlooked part of governance is actually if the business logic is a matching to what user actually means. So users are supposed to use a free text language to, to interact with Agentic. But do we govern how exactly those definitions, the terminology basically that they use, match to organizational definitions? So for example, I'll give you an example. I would like to ask about how, um, how many churned customers did we had last month? And I guarantee that it will be at least two systems in organization which might have slight deviation, deviation of how those churned users are calculated. Maybe your product usage system and your CRM system and so on and so forth. So at the moment, if you just use Agentic out of the box, your question is randomly goes to one of those definitions and gives you an answer. 
this is the biggest governance fault at the moment, not to be able to govern that the answers that you are getting actually match the terminology that you used for, for the right definition. It's totally black box at the moment. And I think this uh, miscommunication or lack of signals of truth and alignment is going to bite us very hard in Agentic. And this is where lots of, lots of companies still struggling. I think the biggest part here is putting agentic a uh, practice as a silo, right? So the companies usually already have governance practices established, you know, all this uh, frameworks and policies and mechanisms and guide rails and monitoring established for data analytics practices, but somehow agentic becomes a new discipline, which is doesn't really adhere to the same protocol, so to the same reporting line, and the governance is not embedded part of it. And so this is why we're actually losing everything that we accomplished in 20 years of data management analytics. Um, for, for those uh, practices, we actually lose it big time in Agentic. Second part of governance, which uh, companies are really struggling with, is financial governance. And I would stress that it's part of the governance. So being able to actually predict the spend on on agentic costs and even predict the ROI from specific business case or specific questions to, to be calculated with agentic is pretty nascent at this point. The majority of companies overspend and have really hard time to, to align their future spend to the actual business value. Yeah, hundred percent. I think everybody's just, you know, buy, buy, buy and, and buy mode, you know, let's just buy everything, test everything. Um, and, and, and I was asked, actually asked that question, um, you know, what makes the ROI for a, a, an AI investment, you know, at a firm, at a, at a corporation. And to me, it's really the bottom line, right? Is, is the addition of this gen AI tool or application going to drive more revenue to the company and also empower us or enable us to provide a better or more efficient customer service to our customers, right? I mean, because at the end of the day, if it's not generating more revenue for the client and and the organization, you know, what's the what's the point, right? I hate to say it point. like that, but what's the point, right? So, Maureen, I know we talked a lot about the future around generative AI and as it relates to the information governance professional. What are your thoughts around that question? What What are you thinking? I'm thinking we don't have enough time. <laughs> there's There's so many ways of um, of approaching that. I think you know the one that comes to mind most is just like the opportunity that it creates from a career development and growth perspective. I think we kind of touched on it when we were together last week, but we didn't really have sort of too much time to expand on the topic, and that's that's probably the sort of main takeaway for me in terms of like what should we be looking at because certainly from a you know from a technology perspective we're going to see we're going to continue to see enhancements similar to the ones that Jeff described right there's going to be better productivity tooling they're going to be avatars and agents right they're going to be agents that don't just interact with you but interact with each other so there's there's going to be like much more of an increase in terms of like the interconnectivity um, and the usage of, of data that's going to highlight the importance of information governance. But I think from a sort of personal growth perspective, there's this huge opportunity as well to kind of um, lean into the changes that are happening, right? Because there there's certainly some people that are experts, but many, many others, the vast majority of us are not, right? And so there's somewhat of a level playing field in terms of taking the time to learn now so that we can be better professionals going forward and so that we can continue to be helpful and, and marketable and know how to use these tools to our our benefit. And so I think that, you know, the ability to issue spot, the ability to anticipate risks, the ability to think about, like to Jeff's point, like you still need to know enough about the topic for the output that the Gen AI provides to you to be helpful and to be able to call out like what you need and what you don't. And so there's this huge like learning aspect that to me is, is really profound here. I agree. I mean, for whatever reason, I think, well, probably because, you know, information governance professionals, right? That's it's focused on extracting value from the data that we manage. And now, um, you know, with generative AI and the whole term AI governance, 
for whatever reason, information governance professionals are responsible for a lot of the AI governance uh, programs at their organizations. And now is a time, as you mentioned, uh, Marina, to just learn, 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 and learn as much as you can, right? Because I think IG professionals are at the forefront of this. What's the future vision for the GIC? And how do you see that vision coming to fruition? Maybe you can go first. Nate, Nate, you want to take that one? I think we're already starting to to see the 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 trail of of that uh, progression and where we want to be. And I guess the end game, right, is uh, we want to be the organization globally that people come to to ask about uh, perspectives and thoughts around policies and what needs to be advocated for. Um, you know, like Ian said, all the organizations that are involved are not always going to agree 100% of the time on everything, but coming together on all the things that we can agree with, you know, we kind of have always talked about it as the United Nations of Information and Governance and Information Management. We're there to give everybody a voice, but then also find the things that we can come together on that we know, making sure that uh, there are programs even out there is a is a big piece of advocacy uh, that we want to do uh, for you know government and private organizations. There's there's so many people that aren't doing the things that they need to be doing in this in this area, and not only that, just having the policies and legislation and things like that in place to be able to empower the people that are already doing what they're doing to be able to do it right. That's that's what we aim to be, and. Beyond that, really look to be a resource for people that are unaware of what is out there to come to the GIC and um, see what we're talking about, but also be able to get a glimpse into all of the offerings that the organizations that are part of the consortium uh, have to offer. There are so many different certifications and education areas and um, you know communities that are out there within these organizations. And uh, while the GIC is, is, you know, there for this big picture, bigger voice uh, aspect, you may find that the, that the needs that you have are served by one of the organizations that are a part of the GIC. And we're there to kind of be the mouthpiece of those organizations as well. Yeah. And it's, it's been interesting um, that you said, we mentioned that it's been take three years in the making. We, three years ago, I mean, obviously did a bit of consultation and collaboration. And then I think 12 months after that, we started to create um, a strategy for the GIC so that that was we could actually demonstrate to those that wanting to come become involved that there is a, a plan. Like we're not just talking here's a plan, but in the last in even in the last twelve months that plan has evolved because uh, this industry just keeps changing as we all know, right? And so what was it relevant and it still is relevant, but don't get me wrong. But what's become probably more relevant or more pertinent or trending right now has changed. Three years ago when we started this, AI was a concept and now AI is just in our face. And this is at the last meeting of the, the GIC, which was only a few months ago. Uh, the focus of the, in the strategy is going to change. So we're looking at emerging technologies more so, uh, not more so, but in addition to, and maybe have some focus areas. And then there's also there's things like privacy and cybersecurity all of a sudden have come into play. They're really predominant. And that's a global, that's global everywhere. I mean, that's here. It's, I mean, I say here in Australia, it's in, in the US, it's in the UK. We're all talking cybersecurity, privacy, and AI, I think are probably the three main topics. So in saying that, as much as what we, what we want to achieve, we had two years ago, it, as I said, it keeps evolving. And that's a good organization, in my opinion, um, to evolve with what's trending. If we just stayed still. I think we've become defunct before we've ever started. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think it'll continue to evolve, right? There's always emerging technologies, different functions and uh, business units and things. So definitely a bright future ahead. IG professionals, you know, we're the, we're the bear of bad news. You know, we got to destroy things. We roll out policy. And it seems like AI, this technology is an opportunity for us to actually help our organizations utilize or benefit from the data that we've been managing or governing all these years. That's exactly right, Jim. And it, it, it furthers the 
agenda that I think we have all always had and not always been able to implement, which is there is benefit, there is upside to getting control of things. And this, I think AI really, it's not always about risk. This is now the opportunity side of the equation finally coming to bear. I really well, like that because the sort of reputation that IG often has, records management often has, is that we are the ministry of no. We, we say, no, you can't implement that system or that technology or that tool because we don't know how to manage the information or we can't govern it properly. And I think, Sandy, you're right. This is the opportunity to be part of the team that helps this technology grow within an organization and helps bring business advantage. And I think that, I think we need to step away from being the the stop sign and rather being the green light. Right. I, and I think, and I so think if, if you view, and this comes from, you know, the sort of the historical idea of like, we, we mitigate risk. So if you think about that, instead of just mitigating risk, if you think of that as we provide responsible guardrails to flourish within, it just completely changes from a pessimistic outlook to an optimistic. 